Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. The escalating SNC-Lavalin scandal that has dominated Canadian politics and consumed the government only promises to grow as Parliament returns this week. Questions about why Jody Wilson-Raybould resigned and if the Prime Minister's office pressured her to drop corruption charges against SNC-Lavalin have gone unanswered, driven by Wilson-Raybould's continued silence and the government's shifting story. The company at the heart of the controversy is one of Quebec's oldest and most prominent. Joining me now is Innovation, Science and Economic Development Minister Navdeep Baines. Welcome to the show, Minister. Well, thank you very much for having me. Sir, you're the minister in charge of industry and, of course, SNC-Lavalin falls under that. Did you support a deferred prosecution for the company? So as you know that this policy development around the deferred prosecution agreement was presented in the budget bill. It was debated in the House of Commons and by many members in the Finance Committee. And this reflects our government's position with regards to putting this particular tool out there to level the playing field with other jurisdictions that have similar uh, tools in their toolbox when it comes to dealing with deferred prosecution agreements. Were you in favor in this particular case, though, with SNC-Lavalin for them to receive a deferred prosecution agreement? Well, as you know, I'm the Minister of Industry, and an essential part of my job is to meet with businesses. And SNC-Lavalin met with me and many other members, including the leader of the official opposition, Andrew Scheer, and Jagmeet Singh as well from the NDP, to talk about you know, particular issues with regards to their company. Uh, I was very clear about our support uh, for economic growth and jobs in Canada. But they understood very clearly that uh, I would not interfere in the independence administration of the law. Do you think that Jody Wilson-Raybould made the correct decision not to intervene? Again, that's a uh, decision that she has to speak to. I don't know what the calculation was that she made. I think this is what Canadians want to know, so I can't speak really on her behalf. I think that's where it comes to. We, we haven't heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould on this, but I, you were in Cabinet, you were in these meetings. Was your impression that this is what the government wanted, that they wanted Jody Wilson-Raybould to step in? Well, first of all, I can't speak to what was said in Cabinet, but I can tell you right now we have open, robust conversations. Uh, and, you know, with regards to the decision she made or did not make, what determinations or calculations uh, occurred, that's something that she can speak to. But from my perspective, we all understand the clear separation between having conversations and her ability to exercise uh, her independence. Uh, this is something that our government really understands in terms of the rule of the law, uh, making sure that we do not interfere in the independence administration of the law as well. Although that's what's at the center of this whole controversy, and I know that you were lobbied by SNC-Lavalin, which you just referred to, uh, your former chief yeah. of staff, your current chief of staff. This is such a, a large company, especially in Quebec, and it's the position of many in that province that the government should do something now. Are you in favor of stepping in and creating a deferred prosecution agreement at this point, as Premier Legault and others have asked for? So this is the decision that the current Attorney General has to make. This is not a decision I make or the Prime Minister but you're makes. The, you're the From industry minister. What would you like to see happen? Oh, yeah, no, I, I understand the concerns around jobs, but I also understand that you have to look at all the facts. I'm not in that position to look at all the relevant facts. That's before the courts. What I can say is that with regards to the deferred prosecution agreement, that tool does exist. The current attorney general can use that tool. The prosecutors can use that tool. Uh, my job, of course, is to listen to the concerns of industry. But I do not interfere in the administration of the law. And snc Lavland understands that, and so do other businesses who approach us on a range of issues. Are you concerned about what will happen to snc Lavalin if the prosecution continues? Again, this is issues that have been raised by many in the business community, including SNC-Lavalin. I think uh, the deferred prosecution agreement, as I mentioned, does level the playing field with other jurisdictions like the United States, UK, and Japan that have this. But at the same time, we want to make sure that anyone that has done something wrong does meet the consequences of those acts. And so it's really important to make sure that people are held accountable. Uh, what do you say to Canadians who perceive this as big companies getting a break that no average Canadian ever would? 
again, this is where I think Canadians need to recognize that we have a co complete separation between the political conversations that we have versus the administration of the law. There's two courts before the, the courts right now, two cases before the courts right now, and our job is to really focus on making sure my job is to look at economic issues, make sure we continue to see growth in jobs, but when it comes to the administration of the law, we defer to our current Attorney General or the previous Attorney General or the, the courts and the justice system to address those issues. That's why we have separation between the political apparatus and the judicial system. Well, but that's, that's what's at the center of this whole scandal, is the allegations that the Prime Minister's office was trying to interfere in that, that they were trying to have Jody well, Wilson Prime Minister. get involved. And that's actually what the change in law allows for. It allows for, politically, a politician to come in and direct the independent prosecutor on what to do. The attorney general has that ability. Not all politicians. I can't make that decision. The prime minister can't make that decision. But the attorney general decision. is and a the prime minister who's has in been cabinet. very clear. Correct, but the attorney general also has the ability to look at the situation and make a determination accordingly. That's something that I can't speak to. That the former attorney general, attorney general, attorney general Jody wilson raybould has to speak to, or the current one, uh, David Lametti. But well, from our perspective, the prime minister has been very clear that look, no a direction was given, no pressure was placed. The prime minister has stated his position, but I understand the concerns you have raised and can Canadians have raised, and that's why we have clearly uh, said unequivocally that we would not interfere in the independence administration but Minister, of the do law. You, do you understand the concerns from Canadians who see the Prime Minister's story changing multiple times from saying Jody Wilson-Raybould did a great job to saying she didn't do her job by coming to him to on Friday saying, well, actually, we did discuss it and she asked if I was going to direct her not allowing her to speak by keeping that attorney-client privilege in place. Uh, she certainly seems to be expressing her opinion on Twitter by liking posts that are supportive of her, but we haven't heard from her. And that's something that your government could allow her to do. For Canadians at home, they're wondering why she's not being allowed to speak, as you've mentioned. And I would think that if this was the Harper Conservatives, you certainly would be calling this a cover-up. The solicitor-client privilege that you're alluding to that would allow her or not allow her to speak is something that she has raised. The Prime Minister has asked for direction from the current Attorney General to look at that. Like I said, there's two cases right now before the court, so it's a complicated situation, but the Prime Minister has addressed these issues day in and day out. He's been very but clear he hasn't, with Canadians. But he hasn't answered and some of those questions when he's been asked very directly. For example, why would she have said, are you going to direct me, if she wasn't feeling pressure? He was asked that on Friday and he dodged. The Prime Minister has said, look, that question was asked, and he responded by saying, you have every ability to direct uh, whatever you want to. It's your decision. I think, you know, right now the challenge is that we need to hear from uh, the Attorney General herself, and that's why we can't, I can't speak on her behalf, but the Prime Minister has stated his position clearly, our government has stated its position clearly. Any meetings we've had with SNC-Lavalin uh, or even the opposition members, all of that is registered in public knowledge. So we're being as transparent and open and accountable to Canadians as much as possible under the circumstances because we well, cannot, you, you could, or you I could cannot speak on behalf of Jody Wilson-Raybould. Uh, well, certainly, the, you Pardon? can't. The Prime Minister could allow her to speak, but we just have a little bit of time left, and I do want to ask you about another key file that you're in charge of, Minister, sure. when it comes to Huawei. Uh, another big discussion. TELUS came out this week. They said there's going to be a serious material cost if the government bans 5G technology from Huawei. Would you consider compensating the big telecoms if the government makes the decision to ban that company? Well, that's prejudging the decision. Uh, as you know, I'm working with the Minister of Public Safety, Ralph Goodale, to look at all the relevant issues with regards to public safety and security and privacy. We will make a decision when we have all the relevant and necessary facts to move forward on that. So I'm not going to prejudge what that decision would look like or any compensation. We have engaged with TELUS and some of the other major providers as well to understand the technological issues. And we're also examining the public safety uh, issues as well and working with our allies. But make no mistake, any decision that we will make will not compromise public safety, privacy or security. Uh, the budget's coming up, Minister. Steel, steel, and aluminum tariffs in place. Are you considering additional relief for Canadian steel and aluminum companies? Well, our first priority is to see these unfair, 
unjust unilateral uh, tariffs removed. That's priority one. This is an issue that I raised with the governor when I went uh, to Michigan at the Detroit uh, Auto Show. Uh, this is priority one. And then in the meantime, we have put forward a $2 billion support package where we're providing support to large steel producers and aluminum producers, as well as helping the small and medium-sized businesses to deal with the cash flow issue through Business Development Canada and Export Development Canada. So we'll continue to support the industry and the workers, and we'll examine where, where we are going into the budget. But make no mistake, our priority is to eliminate these tariffs going forward. Minister, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for joining us. That's all the time we have for today. For more politics from the West Block, please visit our website, thewestblock.ca, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to check out our podcast, which is available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. For the West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson.